Well, this is it. That's it. Sadly, it must move on. <laughs> okay. But we, but I recycle it. So there's that. So I can like layer up all these wonderful little floofs here and there. But the best part, I think, is when I can print directly onto the clay to kind of um, make a, a pattern. Because I like having like there's there's the floof, you know. But then there's like a nice pattern. So well, if, you print, if you printed it on paper first, then it would come out reversed. That's that right. right. Exactly. So like this is orientated so that I kind of have to print it on the clay if I want it to be legible. Right. But then other things, like like this will print just fine because it's so thick, the lines are really thick. Mm -hmm. But for example, um, here I have this piece of notebook paper which is printed the opposite way. Okay. When I print this on the paper, it's going to be backwards. Mm -hmm. But this handwriting is so thin, it's not going to come out as well. So this yeah. is something I use for the transfer technique. Mm -hmm. That is a good question. So let's see if I can do this. So here's that. Here's my brown slip that I like. So it's very gloopy and gross. Kind of get it on here. You always need more than you think you'll need. And then my lovely assistant. Oh, why, thank you. Here's my squeegee. All right, I hope this works. Oh, if it doesn't. Drum roll. Oh, the embarrassment. Oh, my God. So I'm just kind of push it on through. Kind of gently peel it away, and voila! There it is. But as you see, it quick. Yeah. So that it doesn't dry and get. Well. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna put one more time. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You have to clean it up very, very quickly because otherwise. And then I have an assistant right here. She goes rushing off to the sink. But there. Where's your registration points on those? I don't know how to register at all. When I did the printmaking residency at Penland, uh, Erica, who was a teacher, was like, can I teach you how to make registration? And I said, no, because then it won't be the same. So restrictive. But I like this because, as you see, it's really thin, whereas this is a little bit more thicker, you know, like it's more uh, clear. But this and the firing process can get more modeled, kind of, which I rather kind of like. Um, like in the background, so you can see some handwriting in the background, barely. Underneath, yeah, but yeah. I kind of like that to kind of layer it up. This like one's not so good because it's so small. Remnants of stuff. There you go. Beautiful. So, Susan, what is the actual? What is this? Made well, out this, of? well, it's, the this is underglaze. This blue is just underglaze. So it's whatever Amico underglaze is. It's slip okay. stuff. But this is just slip. This is a uh, ball clay feldspar. It's the Ron Meyer slip base. It's very simple. So it's all the uh, same stuff that I'm assuming is an underglaze, but they add gums and other uh, patented, encapsulated stains and whatnot. Right. So, but I can, but I can still use this. Another thing, like I had painted slip on that, but I can also spritz this with water and just get it moist. Like so, yeah, and then transfer that on there too. We'll see how that works. Ta da! It's a little bit wet. Let's see what happens. But this way, it's the same. It's the same process, kind of. I'm not. I'm not as successful with it, which is why I don't do it very often. Ta da! Oh, no, so now yeah. we have another faded kind of uh, antique looking thing. So, there's so then you just use this as yeah. a slab for your base and you make, make a yeah. so at home, rim So normally stuff. I spend a lot of time actually and I'll spend a lot of time layering up colors and like uh, 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 and I'll uh, print here and print there and lay out this composition and whatnot. And I have usually like three slabs at one time and I keep them wrapped up um, <laughs> in between these damp bed sheets with the wet towel on top and plastic and they can stay like that for up to like a month. So I'm in my studio every day. They grow mold, and this will become very kind of black and dark. Can you tell, like, it's growing mold? Can you see what you've done? No, but sometimes it's kind of like, oh, it's you a surprise. You can see what you eat. And then once it's this it's so bright. Yes. Um, but that's what I do. So there's that. So does anyone want to try floofing? Any, any takers on the floofs? I have um, this little pattern that I made that might be fun to transfer if anybody wants to try it. Um, nobody wants to flee. So no. how soon can you handle that? Well, Touch it now. Aren't you going to smudge your writing? Well, well, that that's a good question. So when it comes time to when I'm done, I can blot it with a piece of newsprint, just kind of uh, over the top to kind of uh, 
blot up the excess slip and whatnot. And then I just go ahead and use it. And I just accept that um, I'm going to smear it and mush it. But I feel like that adds to the... Oops, uh -oh, that wasn't so good. Oh dear. We won't show Well, that. the dried slip is now stuck to my plant. <laughs> oh, well, it's all good. It's all good. But I, but I like that because I'm trying to make this work that's kind of antique and kind of vintage looking anyway. That's meant to be um, nostalgic. So then you'll do it sort of on, you'll take that and put it on a hump mold or something. Uh, yeah, and so right here are some of my molds oh. I brought in. So I have this piece of blue foam. <laughs> that's just pieces of blue foam just glued together with rubber cement and then uh, shaped. Uh, one of my friends has a foam cutting thing, which is a heated wire that you can kind of slide this through mm -hmm. and get shapes. And then these are, are just plaster I just poured into plastic things that I found at the thrift shop, like a little uh, corn corn on the cob holder makes a nice little thing and then this was just a plastic plate from Target or someplace and these are really easy to make. I'm not a plaster expert but uh, I do the dry hump mixing method that's how ignorant I am. But it's a great way to make these these simple molds and so they were all made that way and then I add on this foot. Hopefully this and then anyway there you go. So yeah. there you go. Ta-da! Five minutes!